Hello, 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 and good morning. This is Mr. Melendez, and I'm bringing you your new lesson topic for today, 8.6, Voting Rights Protest. So before we get into the main mini lesson, I just wanted to cover what we've been doing so far in the unit. Uh, the unit is pretty much talking about nonviolent protests, and we saw that in our previous lessons we talked about different forms or expressions of protests. And one of them we dealt with was the lunch counters in Woolworths. We did the sit-ins. And then after that we talked about the boycott that happened in Montgomery, Alabama for refusing to use the services for buses when Rosa Parks was asked to move to the back of the bus and she refused. She was jailed, and as a result of it, people organized, and what they did was they boycott the bus system. Now we get to a point, and we're starting to cover more different types of nonviolent protests, and we get to this part where we get to marching. Now, before, we talked about boycotting, and remember that boycott is an expression of protest. It's a voluntary act of intentional Obsession, all right, and what obsession is, is you're restricting yourself from either buying or using a particular product or dealing with a person or organization. So, when it came to boycotting the bus system, people refused to use the buses and instead they organized their own kind of like um, ride along or carpooling service. People walked to work or walked home, they used bicycles. Instead of paying for a bus service that they were being asked to either move to the back of the bus or give up their seats if a white person asked for that particular seat. The best example that I can give you here, modern times, um, in our current situation is um, the unfortunate circumstances that happened to Lissandro Jr. Guzman, who went inside a bodega to look for sanctuary for safety and the people that owned the bodega didn't protect him and the ultimate result was that he was killed the people in the neighborhood in his immediate community decided that they were going to boycott and not buy anything from that bodega the boycott was so strong that the people who owned the bodega had no choice because they lost so much money they had no choice but to shut down so the strength in nonviolent protests is there. We see the results. And now we're getting to another form of protest, which is marching. And that's where we come to our current lesson for today. Attached to the Google Classroom, you're going to have a document, and you're going to be looking at two, um, two documents. Basically, you're going to be watching a video that talks about the march that happened from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery. Uh, there's a wonderful movie that talks about it that's actually called Selma, and I recommend that everyone watches that movie. So you're going to watch that. It's, it's going to be attached in your Google Classroom. It's a YouTube video. Go ahead and click on it. Watch the entire video. And on the Google Doc that I'm going to attach, you're going to see a bank of questions. You're going to have four questions, and you're going to answer those questions based on the video that you watched on YouTube. Continue to scroll down on your document. And then you're going to come to a primary source document, an actual letter that was written by Dr. Martin Luther King when he was jailed in Alabama. So this is the time frame when he has the march in Selma. And this is a, a time frame where he actually, he is, and you're going to read it in the text, he was purposefully put in jail. He wanted to go to jail in order to push the agenda that he was having about protesting against um, voting rights for people of color and more, more for African Americans that were living in the South at that time. Because of what was happening, there was such a huge discrimination against African Americans for voting that sometimes they would wait hours and hours in a line, hundreds of people standing in line, and only four or five would get to vote because they were the only ones that would pass a a test to prove that they could vote. Um, so again, as I talked about marching, remember that marching is an expression of protest. And what it is, is a group of people that are walking from an organized place and they go to a predetermined place and it ends up in a rally. Um, going back to my example before with uh, Junior Guzman, 
um, when this tragedy happened and they were having the the um, the court case that was happening uh, here in the Bronx. Uh, the community rallied together and they actually started in the neighborhood where Junior Guzman grew up. And they walked, I believe, from 181st Street all the way down to 161st Street. And they stopped in front of the courthouse there on 161st near Grand Concourse. And there is where they had their rally to let the court systems know about their um, about wanting to have justice for Junior Guzman. So as you read through this document, you're going to see that that uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, his why he chose to be jailed during this time frame, and he's you're going to read about his main intention, his purpose of why he wanted to be in jail during this time frame. So once you read the, the primary source document, you have three questions that are attached to that document. Go ahead and answer those questions. And just like always, when you answer questions, please answer in full sentences. When you are done, go ahead and submit your Google Doc into Google Classroom. And then that way you can receive credit for your assignment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of the mini lesson. If you have any questions... You feel free to, e to email me uh, or Miss Fig or Miss Corey, or you can visit our office hours, which we have office hours Monday through Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the mini lesson. This is Mr. Melendez. I'm punching out. Have a good day.